Hey there, Jets fans. This is Matt Barbado, founder, editor-in-chief of New York Jet Fuel, and the Jets have just made their second-round selection, and Christian Hackenberg, quarterback out of Penn State. Christian Hackenberg is the guy for the Jets in the second round. A pick that I think a lot of people, including myself, would classify as a reach, but th there was reports earlier in the week that the Jets had an, quote, affinity for Christian Hackenberg, and it showed because they're 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 using a big big pick on Christian Hackenberg when they have plenty of other needs um, to address on the field. So I'm with my co-pilot Max Marzilla, who just gave a grade uh, of this pick. Max, lead it off. What grade did you give uh, this pick? And you can check out Max's article on nyjetfield.com. But for the viewers, what what grade would you give this pick? I gave the pick a C, Matt, and. The more I think about it, the more I'm leaning towards like a C minus. Uh -oh. uh, I gave uh -oh. Darren, I gave Darren Lee a good grade yesterday, so I feel like I have to even myself out a bit. Uh, it, it it's a weird pick. I I don't love Hackenberg the prospect. First of all, uh, I think it's a bit of a reach in the second round, but that is to be expected because look, you had the top two quarterbacks go one two. You had Paxton Lynch in the first round. All the quarterbacks are getting overdrafted. You can't tell me that the two best players in this draft are Goff and Wentz. That's just the way the quarterback position goes in the draft. Everyone gets overdrafted. So fine. The Jets did that. I'm not going to criticize them for Scarcity. that. They Scarcity like their guy. They got him. Scarcity creates desperation. You said that. I think you said that on the show yesterday on our podcast. So, I mean, it's a common theme. But the problem I have, besides the fact that I just don't like Hackenberg as a prospect, is – there were other guys on the board. I liked Cody Whitehair, the guard from Kansas State. Um, I liked Alexander, the cornerback from Clemson. And you can even argue, and I wrote this in my article, and I, I really, I'm not going to rush to any conclusions. I'm not going to say this is what I truly firmly believe, but I do want to go back and watch some film because I'm not 100% sure I think Hackenberg is the best quarterback that was even available. I think Connor Cook is right there with him. I don't love either of them as prospects. But I think Connor Cook might be a bit better. If not, they're very close. So, look, the Jets got the guy they liked more, obviously. A bit of a reach, but they had to make that pick. If they wanted a quarterback, it would have to be a reach. The problem I have, I just don't love Hackenberg as a prospect. He struggles with accuracy. Yes, he was behind a terrible line, but it's not like he's going behind you know, the Dallas Cowboys line. The Jets' offensive line is going to struggle this year, especially since they haven't used the top pick on an offensive lineman. So I don't love the pick. Um, he will benefit from Marshall and Decker if he does get a chance to start. Um, but it's an interesting situation because you have all these variables with Fitzpatrick. We have no idea what his role will be, if anything, in year one. Yeah, and I, th I think Ian Rappaport dropped a, a little note that said, expect a one-year deal with the Jets and Fitzpatrick. I, I don't really – because his report was that the Jets were not planning to start Hackenberg right away. But if you're not going to start Hackenberg right away, who are you going to play ahead of him? Geno Smith? God help me. I'll throw up throughout the, the next 16 games of the season. Um, yeah, Hackenberg's a really curious case. Um, there were some players uh, – there were two offensive linemen, Cody Whitehair and um, Christian Westerman from Arizona State, both offensive guards who I liked. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander, I don't know if he's gotten picked yet. He, he continues to fall. So he was a guy I thought would have been a decent pick at 51. Um, the, the Jets were sort of seeing like good targets go off the board left and right. So there were, it's not like there were a ton of really great options outside of Hackenberg. I thought the Jets would take Hackenberg in the third round. Um, I had Sterling Shepard to the Jets, which I was totally off on because he went to the Giants right away in the second round. Great pick, um, by the way. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I I totally whiffed on Pax and Lynch. I had them taking a quarterback at some point. I, I just kept doubling down on the quarterback. There you go. That's what you have to do. It's the NFL. You take a quarterback until you get one. So let's let's review Hackenberg's stats quickly. 2,525 yards uh, last season, 16 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, completed 53.5% of his passes. Uh, in 2014, 2,977 yards, 55.8% completion percentage 12 touchdowns 15 interceptions that that was a I mean he was a that was a really horrible season that was coming off of a pretty good freshman season uh where he completed nearly 60 percent of his passes 2,955 yards 20 touchdowns 10 interceptions so after his freshman year I think a lot of scouts and analysts thought okay you know the sophomore year will be the year of, of Christian Hackenberg he really took a gigantic step back 
what's amazing is, and this is from our, our, our other uh, contributor, Nick Delahanty's story on uh, jet fuel. You can check out his scouting report that he wrote. Uh, Hackenberg still broke school records uh, for career passing yards with 8,457 completions, and he had nine 300-yard passing games. So maybe that's not as impressive because I can't really think of a great Penn State quarterback that comes to mind. But you consider – I remember too many times the past two seasons watching Penn State football games and laughing out loud at the protection that Christian Hackenberg received. I, I mean, you could seriously can, can say he was playing behind a Division II offensive line. I think that's a really important factor. I think losing Bill O'Brien to the Houston Texans. Bill O'Brien was Hackenberg's head coach's freshman season, and it was a pretty good year. You can't deny that. James Franklin from Vanderbilt comes in. Uh, it doesn't really seem to sink. Uh, it doesn't work out. And that's that's been another factor in his sort of decline. There were people who, who thought Christian Hackenberg would be the top quarterback drafted two or three years ago uh, in whatever class he joined. So this seems like an enormous upside pick. Uh, I, I think it's a pick that could define the Mike McCagnon era in New York. And I'll tell you what, it, they better get Ryan Fitzpatrick back because I don't think Hackenberg's ready to play right now, and they don't have a placeholder uh, – on the depth chart right now who could uh, step in and give Hackenberg a year off. Now I'll tell you this, Matt, you said you would throw up if Geno Smith was the quarterback the first 16 games. Well, I mean, cover your ears if you want, cause I'm going to bring you back to a just as bad memory um, for the jets. Think back to when Geno Smith was drafted. Now keep in mind, and I, I think I've mentioned this on a podcast before, because I think this was one of the biggest mistakes the jets have made in the past decade. Mark Sanchez was supposed to be the starter, and Rex Ryan foolishly kept Sanchez in the game because it, whether he wanted to win the Snoopy Bowl or whatever, it was a meaningless preseason game. He had Sanchez in the fourth quarter. He injured his shoulder, done for the year. Geno Smith has to be the starter. The Jets have to bring back Ryan Fitzpatrick now. Look, whether you like Hackenberg or not, I don't think he's ready year one. The Jets really have to bring back Ryan Fitzpatrick or else they'll make the same mistake that they made with Geno Smith. Look, I'm not saying Geno Smith would have, if he sat a year, he would have been the franchise quarterback. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that there would have been a better chance for that had he had a year behind Mark Sanchez, a year on the bench. The Jets have to get Ryan Fitzpatrick back in New York because if they don't, not only did they waste a draft pick on Christian Hackenberg, but they would also have to start either Hackenberg, a rookie project, Bryce Petty, a, a second year work in progress who's very like, mediocre at best like not a high ceiling or Geno Smith we know what we can get out of him so the Jets are not in a good position unless they get Ryan Fitzpatrick so maybe we see a bit of leverage go back to Ryan Fitzpatrick after we thought the Jets had the advantage in the negotiations yeah I, I the Fitzpatrick situation is just a it's a it's a downright mess and I really I, I don't know what the heck's going to happen with that um, it's just I, the, the, using a second round pick on a guy like Hackenberg, who is extremely raw and really, we don't know an, an, a whole lot about how he's going to translate to the NFL because the talent around him was downright abysmal. Um, it's really tough to gauge him. He's a guy I'm definitely going to have to study more. I know Nick did our uh, Future Jets scouting report on him. He did a great job with that. So you can check out his thoughts on www.nyjetfield.com. But yeah, I mean, this is this is a risky pick, uh, especially for a team that you could argue could have taken an offensive lineman there, uh, could have taken a cornerback maybe, maybe even a wide receiver if there was someone they liked. Plenty of needs they could have addressed. It's not like this was a pick of luxury. Um, so to sort of wrap up this video, unless you have any closing thoughts you want to get in there, I'm curious, uh, heading into training camp, who is the odd quarterback out? Is it going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick, Geno Smith, or Bryce Petty, who we really I, – I can't even say anything about Petty because we haven't seen him since last preseason. Yeah, so, so one, one quick note I do want to add in, and the big difference between the Geno Smith situation and this situation is you have to look at the talent around him. And I know I've been kind of harsh on Christian Hackenberg, didn't give him a great grade, criticizing his accuracy. I think that's fine. But if he does get an opportunity – Having Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, Jason Morrow will be back. Matt Forte will be the Jets running back. He'll have talent around him. So it'll definitely be an interesting situation to monitor. I don't love Hackenberg, the prospect, but 
interesting fit with the Jets. Uh, and, and Hackenberg likes it. He said it would be, a, quote, an awesome fit. So, I mean, we'll see if he well, likes it. Of course it. he did because he got probably drafted higher than he expected. It's a, it's a great fit for him. He could have been a yeah. third or fourth round pick. If well, you're not going to go ahead and put on the Jets hat and then say, yeah, you know, it's not a great fit, but whatever, I'll take what I can get. You're not – no, you're not going to say that on ESPN or NFL Network. Um, to answer your question that I uh, narrowly avoided, um, I'm going to say the odd man out might be Geno Smith. So this is assuming that the Jets bring Ryan Fitzpatrick back. I, I don't think – the Jets are ready to give up on Petty. Keep in mind, they traded up for him. So when they drafted him, they had to like him. He wasn't a guy who just fell into their lap, and they're like, well, okay, we need a quarterback. They liked him. They liked him as a prospect. They traded up only a couple picks, but they traded up to get him. I don't think they're ready to give up on Petty. You can never have too many young quarterbacks because you don't know what you're going to get out of him. You're obviously not going to cut Hackenberg because he's your pick this year. Right. I think okay. Smith might be the odd man out because he's if the Jets cut him, According to overthecap.com, the Jets would gain a million or save a million dollars in cap space. So that could be a nice little bonus. I know the Jets have pretty much nothing now, so they could use every every penny, which sounds crazy when we're talking millions, but they really could. So I think Smith might be the odd man out, but it all depends because if the Jets don't bring back Ryan Fitzpatrick or if Fitzpatrick wants, you know, 15, 16 million and the Jets don't feel like they can give it to him, then we might see a Smith Hackenberg petty depth chart and a lot of vomit over there at the Barbado that, residence. That's a disaster. I, I think Bryce Petty's the odd man out. A lot of people are saying, well, you wasted a fourth-round pick on him. Yeah, but you know what? That's the way it goes sometimes. Um, I could see Geno getting cut, but I think they need to keep Geno because I don't think the Jets have any plans of playing Hackenberg at all. At least they shouldn't. So you need a guy who's at least taken NFL snaps to be there. Um if Petty had shown a little bit more in the preseason, maybe. But really, that first game against Detroit, he looked just like a lost puppy out there. The second game he played in was a little bit better, but still nothing, you know, incredible. Um, I, I think Petty's the odd man out. That's assuming they bring back Fitz, though, like you said. And huh, that doesn't look to be resol- even close to resolved yet uh, as OTAs and uh, training camp and, you know, mini camp slowly approaches. So that'll wrap up this uh, Jet Fuel video, breaking down the second round selection of Christian Hackenberg. The third round is underway. We aren't done yet. Be sure to check out all of our articles about Hackenberg at nyjetfuel.com. Uh, and we'll definitely be doing a video at the end of the night, recapping the second and third rounds for the New York Jets. Uh, the third round has just gotten underway, so the Jets should be picking in about, well, hopefully, less than 30 minutes, but you never know with the NFL draft. Uh, the Jets pick 83rd in the third round. So keep an eye out for that. We will keep you updated on everything you need to know about gang green. This has been a Jeff field video.